Fellas, today we are reviewing a pulse rifle that has returned to us called GN7 Rifle. Now this pulse rifle has it all, or so it seems on paper. Probably the biggest selling factor of this pulse rifle is that it is the furthest reaching pulse rifle I have ever played with. Matter of fact, depending on your roll, damage fall off could reach as far as 50 meters. 50 meters on a pulse rifle, sounds insane. Now before we get into today's video, we have a sponsorship. That's right fellas, Raid Shadow Legends is back again, and here in May, they actually launched patch 1.15 bringing about arena tournaments. It's actually pretty wild, guys. They got things like the Spider's Den, the Almighty Fire Knight, Ice Golem's Peak, as well as the Notorious Dragon that you and your clan mates can fight up against. Now, they just recently finished up the Dragon's Tournament. My clan actually placed number 49. Just saying, dude. I know that's not like, you know, top three or even top 10, but hell, top 50, that's not bad. Big shout out though to my clan mates, the Bayou Boys. This is actually a pretty fun game. I know mobile games isn't for everyone, but it's one of those turn-based strategy games where as you progress, you start to see your champions get noticeably stronger. Matter of fact, my favorite champion still to this day is Smash Lord. He's my highest level champion and he used to barely do enough damage back when I first got him. But now that I've leveled him up, he is extremely potent. Now going on right now is actually the Ice Golem Tournament. And again, with these tournaments, just participating in them gives you access to a host of rewards as well as placements there on the leaderboards. For any new players, Players that are interested in getting into this game, I would suggest it to those that are a fan of turn-based RPG-based games. That's exactly what this is. Down below in the description, though, is a link, and with that link, you'll actually get 200,000 silver for free, as well as this free champion right here, Grinner. Now, as much as I love my Smash Lord champ, Grinner is by far superior in every facet. If there was a way for me to get this champion, I would, outside of just outright earning it. But for new players, this simply comes for free by just joining today. And again, if you happen to be playing this game, fellas and you're looking for an active clan by you boys is going strong so feel free to come by now back to the video gn7 rifle fellas this thing looks so impressive on paper and i actually like this pulse rifle back in year one i will say though the toss-up between these 390s for me was like inaugural dress in gn and i actually went with inaugural dress because of the static rolls back in year one but gn was one of those that i was like man if they would ever just give us random rolls on this thing i believe it could be a monster a lot of people really like it it's got scopes very similar to things like hawksaw or suros bdx back inside of d1 many of us really like those pulse rifles i did too and you can just tell by the gun model itself it's very very similar now the rolls that i'm going to show you today one is nearly a max range roll this one comes with the spo 57 which greatly boosts that range as well as our zoom high caliber rounds which was an interesting one not really one we get hung up on but one i wanted to try here on a 390 considering at the time the kill for 390s aren't that good. I mainly just wanted to flinch, folks. Zim moment for that increase in stability upon landing damage and range finder for that increase in range as well as zoom magnification. We also have a range masterwork. Now this was a pretty crazy one. It's only got 65 range, guys, and 50 stability. And the stability is kind of noticeable. You'll notice it's got a little more hop than what you would probably normally like on a pulse. I even played with it on a controller and definitely could tell that there was a lot more hop. But technically speaking, yes, the weapon weapon has the ability to reach all the way up to 49 meters. Fellas, this outpaces just about every other pulse rifle I think I've ever used. Like, there's a few other pulse rifles that might be able to rival it. I think Einstein is one. But if you just go down the list, this outranges things like Blast Furnace, Sacred Providence, Bygones, Adorative, and most definitely any rapid fire pulse rifle it outranges. Now, is having that much range necessary in this current sandbox? No. Because despite it having as much range as it does, there's just not many maps that I would say you need to tangle up with people at 50 plus meters, especially with the pulse rifle. At that point, you should just be using a scout rifle. And you know how we feel about scout rifles in this sandbox. So whenever I'm saying that this pulse rifle, despite it having all these stats loading out in range, and it's still able to tack on shots without any damage fall off, the inconsistencies that you will still have, especially at 40, 45 plus meters, far outweigh any benefits that this pulse rifle presents. Now, I was really hoping that Zen moment was just gonna keep everything together that I was going to be able to get away with having 
rangefinder, max range, and a super zoomy scope here. And Zen Moment was just going to suck those shots down together and we would be golden. It just doesn't do enough. Like it does something. Obviously, Zen Moment definitely helps with stability. I've got many, many weapons that I really like. But in Gian's case here, it definitely helped, but it still was not enough to keep those shots stable in those far reaching ranges. Now, part of me started to think that the deviation in my shot could actually just fall on my scope. I felt like my scope in general just didn't do a good job of those follow-up shots. Now, I actually have another GN7. This one has one less zoom and a little less range, but you can probably tell from this SPO28 front scope that it's very similar, if not identical, to some of our favorite scopes that were found on Hawksaw and Cirrus PDX back inside of Destiny 1. I can't even remember off the top of my head what those scopes were called. All I can tell you is that in GN's case, this is by far the best scope to be using. To me, it's a good middle ground between a lot of zoom and a lot of range, but still maintains that handling. This roll felt good to me. I really did like this roll just because of that scope, which made me wish the current GN7 that you're seeing gameplay of, if only I could have swapped out that scope, this roll would have been golden. But taking a look at the random rolls, there is some unique factors about this pulse rifle that I want to point out. First up, like we said a second ago, the SPO28 front scope, extremely important guys. Highly, highly recommend it. I know it's got these other scopes highlighted and I'm not saying you can't do good with those other scopes. Light GG's got like the SPO57 scope highlighted as well as the 52. My experience with those, despite it boosting that range and zoom up so much, it produces inconsistencies and I think they're just purely visual, but it's enough to throw you off target in those gunfights, right? So highly, highly recommend the SPO28 front scope. Now in our magazine column for PvP, all right, high caliber guys, I definitely don't want to overlook it. This is a pulse rifle that's in that 390 archetype. It's got a 0.93 second time to kill value. It's super forgiving, allowing you to hit two body shots and five crits for that optimal time to kill. Matter of fact, majority of the times when I got in gunfights, I was just kind of shooting at the top of the chest toward neck area. And nine times out of 10, I would get the kill in three bursts. Even if the majority of the shots were body shots, you want to primarily just always make contact no matter what, which led me to believe that high caliber rounds does help here. Having a 0.93 second time to kill value, obviously is going to put you at a disadvantage, especially against 600 round per minute auto rifles, but even against hand cannons, 150s especially. So in this situation, I found high count did help. It did flinch people. I would highly recommend it, especially if you're planning to use this pulse rifle for its intended range, which is in that mid range. Ricochet would be my second choice, obviously, but I would actually say just go with Ricochet if you plan on doing a max range roll. If you plan on doing some crazy shenanigans where you need that plus 10 stability to keep that shot from deviating at those great ranges, especially if you're combining it with a high zoom scope as well as range finder, then by all means, roll with Ricochet. But in this sandbox, I would really recommend using high caliber guys for that extra bit of flinch. Now in our trade columns, you probably noticed disruption break here. That's right. Cool guy actually called it out. I want to say a few weeks ago when he reviewed this pulse rifle, disruption break is not a common perk on pulse rifles, which by the way, substantially increases that damage when popping the shield of an enemy, most notably against barrier champions. We actually reviewed it back inside of Season of the Undying, showcasing auto rifles with disruption break. What actually occurs when you pop an anti-barrier shield with a weapon with disruption break, and yes, it applies that debuff, allowing for your kinetic weapons to do more damage. It's a good chance next season, we may get a rotation in which pulse rifles might have anti-barrier rounds, which in GN's case would be perfect. I'm not sure what the rotation is going to be. I guess it's normally just random, right? But for my PvE players that are seeing this pulse rifle drop in their inventory, if you come across one with disruption break, keep it, fellas. You never know when you might need it. But for my PvP players, there really is only three options. Full auto, Zen moment, and firmly planted. Now, I throw full auto in there because a lot of people like full auto. Similar to 360s as well as 390s, I think full auto is unnecessary. Here's the thing about full auto. Full auto becomes advantageous when we hit 400 rounds per minute or higher, or better yet, 450. When we get into the realm of like rapid fire weapons, especially on pulse rifles or 540s, that's when something like full auto is extremely nice. For GN's case, not necessary. To me, really the only two perks you should be looking at, and like GG's got it right right here, Zen Moment and Firmly Planet. Now, this is a big one. I'm a firm believer that Firmly Planet is the better option here. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, what the hell? What about Zen Moment? It stabilizes the gun. You just talked about how the weapon needs more stability. Yes, you're right. Zen Moment does stabilize the gun, but to me, the effect is not nearly as good as something like Rapid Hit. I think 
think it's still good, but not as good. So for me, I would actually take rapid hit here in place of Zen Moment, but we don't have that option. Realistically though, guys, I would go firmly planted. I'm just saying, fellas, you're gonna get that increase in accuracy, stability, and handling when firing this weapon while crouch. I know you're not gonna always be crouch, but every time you do go down for that crouch, you're gonna get all those benefits at once. And if there's one thing I can say about this pulse rifle, it does feel a tad bit sluggish. So even having that nice bump there in handling is gonna be appreciated. Now the final trade column, man, you got so many options. It's kind of crazy. For PvE players, you got a dragonfly option right here. Matter of fact, I like the idea of like dragonfly and disruption break together. I don't really know how that goes. That needs to be something we test. Say for instance, I kill an enemy, proc dragonfly next to another enemy that has a shield. The AOE effect then proceeds to pop the shield with the disruption break debuff actually apply. Huh? I don't know, guys. It might. If you got that role, let me know. I need to talk to you. On the other side of things, though, I guess the two or maybe even the three traits that are the standoff traits for PvP and for PvE is Rampage, Swashbuckler for your damage dealing perks, and Rangefinder if we're wanting to do some crazy shenanigans and get max range. Now, like I said a second ago, I would prefer this pulse rifle to just be what it's intended to be, to just be a mid-range pulse. That could potentially allow you to stretch into those long ranges, but only utilizing the scopes, right? So I would actually take either Rampage or Swashbuckler and probably just Rampage. Get Planet, drop a knee, proc firmly Planet, get that first kill rolling, and off to the races you go with Rampage. And you can proceed to just chain kill after kill. That would be the role that I would actually go for. Outside of that, guys, that's pretty much it. Mod-wise, this weapon does have a recoil direction of 80. You can throw a counterbalance mod on it, which would throw it to 95. The weapon will get super vertical at 95, pretty much almost perfectly vertical, allowing this gun especially with the right rolls like firmly planted on it to really keep this gun super accurate super stable and super consistent that's my recommendations guys again the spo 28 front scope i can't stress it enough i hope i got some fans in here you know what i mean like can somebody else let me know that they like this scope am i the only one i love this scope this is like my favorite scope in the game i'm telling you fellas and i love fat reticles i've always said get the fattest reticles and this reticle is not fat but it's perfect guys fellas and ladies Thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.